Well, hello 3E and welcome to a lesson on simple interest. Our goal today, I can calculate simple interest on investments and savings. So what do I mean by simple interest? Well, uh, you first have to know what interest is and hopefully you have some idea of what interest is. Interest is money paid at a particular rate in exchange for money lent. So um, if you borrow some money, um, someone is lending you money, uh, you have to pay them for the privilege to actually have that money. Um, and that is called interest. Or vice versa, if you lend somebody money, you can expect them to pay you interest. So when you deposit money into some kind of savings account at a bank or other financial institution, the bank actually uses that money to lend to other people. So they take your money, um, which you're basically lending to the bank, and they give it to other people to use for the stuff that they want. But in exchange for that, those other people give the bank interest. So the bank makes money off of your money. Now, when the bank makes money off of your money, it's only fair that they cut you in on some of that. So when you have a savings account, they will give you some interest for the use of your money. So there's interest all over the place on this. The bank gives you interest um, for the use of your money, and uh, the people that they lend it to give the bank interest for use of your money. Okay. Um, now, Please note that the bank, the interest rate that the bank pays you is not nearly as good as the interest rate that they're charging for it. Now, when you're talking about the difference between savings and checking accounts, savings accounts are meant as a place to store money for a long time. Uh, so the bank has use of that money for a long time. Checking accounts are a convenience for you uh, to be able to make transactions. It's a place for the bank to put your uh, pay in. Uh, it's a place for you to write checks off of um, so that you don't have to carry all your cash around or so you don't have to keep your cash in a peanut butter container in the cupboard or something along those lines. Okay, um, It's a convenience for you. Uh, money goes in and out of a checking account so fast that the bank can't lend it to anybody. So they can't get money off of your money by lending it to other people. And that's why they charge you transaction fees so that they are actually making money off of your money somehow. Um, and basically it comes from you this time, not from other people. Um, as a result, most checking accounts don't offer you any interest at all. But since a savings account is holding the interest, holding the money there for a longer period of time, and they want you to leave that money there so that they can lend it to other people, um, they're going to give you some interest for that. Okay, so the an interest rate is usually given as a percent. Okay, uh, and when it's stated, it's usually a yearly interest rate. And if they don't tell you that it's um, that it's for a week or a month or whatever, you need to assume that it's going to be for a year. Uh, and oftentimes when we're talking about yearly interest rates, they will use the words per annum. And that just means yearly. So per annum and annum is like annual, you know, you get something annually it means per year, so per annum means per year. They're both exactly the same thing. Oops, that's the funniest equal sign I've ever seen. Okay, per annum is equal to per year. Okay, now I've talked at you long enough now, I'm going to do an example. So let's have a look at this and see if we can work our way through it. Example one, the bank account you choose has an interest rate of 2% per annum. How much money will you have after five years if you deposit $4,000 now? Well, let's see, 2% of 4,000, how do I get that? That's 2%, remember we have to change it to a decimal, 0 0.02, uh, of means multiply, $4,000. So 2% of 4,000, let's pull up our handy calculator. 
and we got 0 0.02 times 4,000 is $80. But that's $80 for one year, because that's 2% per year. If we leave it there for five years, we get five times that. So I have to take, take what I got for a year and multiply it by five. So I'll take my 80 and I'll times it by five and I get 80 times five is 400. Uh, so that's not bad. I've got $400, but this is just the interest. I still have that $4,000. The bank doesn't own that money. any. It's still in there. I can leave it in there for longer. The bank is using that money. But if you go back to the bank and say, I want my $4,000, they have to give it to you. Um, but they're also going to give you the interest that you earned for leaving it there for five years. So the total amount is 4,000 plus 400 or 4,400. Now we're going to simplify this into a formula for you um, where this here is going to be called R for the interest rate. This $4,000 here is the principal. Uh, principal means the money that's initially invested. So this is going to be given a P for principal. Uh, and this 5 is the number of years you left it there. So we're going to call that T. And if you take a look at what we have um, here, to find the interest up in this, this calculation up here, to find the interest, what we did was we took the rate, we multiplied it by the principal, uh, and then once we were done, we got this answer, and we multiplied that answer by the time. So I equals rate times principal times time, or we actually see it as principal times rate times time is the way it's usually written. And then this part here, our total, our total we call the amount, and that's the amount that you have left over. Your amount equals what you initially invested. What was that? what you initially invested, you remember what that was called? That was called the principal, so we're going to say P, uh, and then we have to add on this, which was our interest that we calculated here, plus I. Okay, so those formulas, we're actually going to use those formulas, rather than having to think through all these steps every time, we're going to have the formula that will do that for us. So here's our formula, I equals PRT, where I is the interest earned, I is interest earned. P is principal, which is the amount invested. R is the rate per annum. Uh, and we're going to say that as as a decimal. So make sure you change any um, percent given to you into a decimal by dividing by 100. And T is the time in years. Okay. And again, but that's just the interest. You still have the initial amount. Um, that still belongs to you, so to find the whole amount that you have, you have to take the amount and add in the principal plus the interest. Print, whoop, that's not how you spell principal. Principal plus uh, interest. Okay, let's go on to another example. This one says that Darcy invests $12,000 at an interest rate of 4%. Now, that doesn't say per annum, but we need to assume that it's per annum. If it doesn't say, it's still per annum. So he invests $12,000. Um, this is the initial amount he invested, so in math terms that's called the principal, which we say is P. And 4% 
the rate is 0 0.04. We've got to change that into a decimal. And so this is now R. How much would he have left if he left it for A, 10 years, or B, only 8 months? So let's do A here. And sometimes it helps to write out the formula first. Um, we have I equals PRT. And then A equals principal plus interest. So we have to figure out the interest first. Now I'm going to write these down here. I'm going to write PRT down the side. And I'm going to fill in beside it what we know. So we know that the principal is 12000 And we know that the rate is 4%, so 0 0.04. And we know that the time for part A is 10 years. And we have to find the I is what we don't know. So I'm going to say interest equals principal times rate times time. And the principal in this case is $12,000. I'm going to multiply that by the rate, 0 0.04, and then multiply that by the time, which is 10. Let's pull out my trusty calculator here, and we have 12,000 times 0 .04 times 10 it is $4,800. After 10 years, he gets $4,800 in interest. That's pretty good. Uh, let's double check it. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to double check it. You go 12,000 times 0 .04 times 10. There we go, 4,800, definitely right. Okay, now the amount equals the principal plus the interest. In this case, the principal, what he, I'm, <coughs> sorry, what he invested in the first place is $12,000, and the interest, what he made, is 4,800. So now, after 10 years, with uh, this investment, his $12,000 has turned into $16,800. Not too bad if you can find something that gives you 4% interest rate. Um, part B, uh, only eight months. Now this is less than a year, so let's look at our P, uh, R, and T again and see what we can do here. Our principal is still 12,000. Our rate is still 0 0.04. Our time this time though is eight months, but time has to be in years. So to turn eight months into years, I have to divide it by 12. And I'm gonna leave it as just eight over 12. So this is months, divided by 12 turns this into a year calculation or a fraction of a year. So it's less than a year, so this is going to be a decimal. So now we do I equals principal times rate times time. The principal is $12,000. The rate is 0 0.04 and the time is 8 twelfths. So I'm going to pull out my handy calculator here, and here's how I'm going to type this in. I'm just going to multiply straight across the top here. Even though this is a fraction, I'm just going to multiply straight across the top. And then when I'm done, this fraction means divided by 12. So then I'm going to divide by 12. So I go 12,000 times 0 0.04 times 8. Oop, that's not an 8. I have to start over again. 12,000 times 0 0.04 times 8 equals, but then we have to divide it by 12. Divide it by 12. So $320 is what Darcy would make in 8 months. And so the amount he has, the amount is the principal plus the interest, which is going to be 12000 plus 320 dollars, uh, which is $12,320 is how much he has.
Okay, now you're going to have a few questions to do with the textbook, but before you do them out of the textbook, I want you to look up what these are, because the textbook uses these terms, and we're going to be talking more about different types of savings accounts, but I want you to quickly check out these terms uh, on the iPad before you go sit back down. Um, look up and see what GIC means. Look up and see what Canada savings bonds are and just jot down a few different points from them. We're going to be looking at them in more detail later, but you need to know what they mean before you can do the questions in the textbook. So look up GIC and look up Canada savings bonds and put down what they are just in point form down here. Uh, and then you have some questions to do. And that concludes this video.